And I want to thank all of you for being here to help fight for justice and fight also for our tax dollars being spent appropriately. Uh, my name is Hanson Clark, and uh, I, I should say I'm Hanson Hashem Clark, and I firsthand understand that racial profiling, unfortunately, uh, goes on extensively here. Uh, being a member of Congress doesn't immunize me from being sent to secondary uh, at the uh, border. And uh, while um, uh, I can understand that because so many innocent people were killed as a result of 9-11, terrorism is an emotional issue in this country. But you and I understand if we want our people to truly be safe, we need to target the folks that are trying to harm us. Not profile people based on their middle name or how they look. Because that's exactly what the terrorists would want. Us to be diverted and have our attention diverted. Uh, the other point is um, regards, regarding our prison industrial complex. I, I, I'm, I'm going to just close. But I have reached out to the Tea Party in Congress because the one positive thing is they're trying to save money. Well, I pointed out in a Homeland Security Committee meeting, all this money that we're spending incarcerating folks, when we could just take a fraction of that, fraction of that, and teach a young brother how to read or provide treatment for mental health or drug addiction that we could avoid spending all that money. And for what purpose? To what purpose? To kill off the soul of someone who many of my friends who are incarcerated to, to protect themselves and to become a new man converted to Islam. That's a blessing for them. So, you know, how dare the US Congress indict someone because of their faith in God? So, you know, let me just share with you. I'm with you on this, but next week we're going to likely have to deal with this whole debt ceiling issue. What you're fighting for today will help put this country on a stronger economic footing. And you know what I'm talking about. Let's stop spending over $100 billion in Afghanistan and redirect. Look, folks. We want security. We're doing it for security purposes. All we have to do is take a portion of that money to create some jobs right here in the United States. The most conservative person in Congress understands that. You see, this is the irony of it. Whether you call yourself a progressive, and I think we all should be for human progress. The best way to be progressive, be conservative with our tax dollars. Demand that we stop blowing our money in Afghanistan, that's outrageous, or incarcerating our young men when they could be nourished and supported here in this country, in this city. So I really appreciate all of you coming here and taking a strong stand. Now, in closing, it's this. Yeah, I can make a speech saying I'm with you, but what does that really matter? Here's how it matters. Number one, I'm on the Homeland Security Committee. That committee has oversight over immigration and customs enforcement, over borders and customs protection. So if there's any allegation of improper treatment, of unconstitutional behavior, on behalf of a federal employee or agent, I'd like to know that. Especially, you know, if you're in the area, if you're the east side of Detroit or in the suburbs that I represent. I'm on the Homeland Security Committee Representative Ranking Member John Conyers, who I used to work for, is on the Judiciary Committee. He and I can complement each other in terms of the Judiciary Committee's oversight over civil liberties, over sentencing laws, over our constitutional form of government. And if you talk about a violation of a Homeland Security agent, you can come to me directly on that. So, as a matter of policy, I'm going to keep promoting that we get out of Afghanistan, that we redirect our money away from incarceration and more toward education. And then again, if you have a specific incident 
that you'd like for us to know about so that we can report it to Homeland Security. It's not going to be in vain. I just met directly again with uh, Jan Janet Napolitano a couple of days ago. That's the benefit of me being on that committee. Uh, we can promote uh, justice in this country and make those ideals, and yes, there were ideals, but still those ideals that are in our Constitution, in our preamble of our Declaration of Independence, that everyone has a God-given right to life, to liberty, to the pursuit of happiness, that's all you're talking about, is that everyone should enjoy that. That if there's someone who's not getting that type of justice, uh, we're able to take action on that. So thank you so much. I want to thank the panel. And, oh, you know what, let, let me just say this too. You could probably help me on one issue. Uh, this whole debt agreement that everybody's trying to work on right now, uh, the only way I'm going to support something like that is that I want to make sure that the people's debt gets cut. Folks that are underwater on their mortgage, I want their mortgages cut down to uh, their equity. And folks that borrowed all this money, it's going to take them 30 years to pay off their student loans. I want the student loan debt cut. So I'll be introducing a resolution. So, look, now this is the last point though. See, all this talk about the debt and everything like that, like, like the country's gonna get strong if you deal with the federal debt. That's not what makes the country strong. You and I know our economy is as strong as we are as citizens financially secure. So reduce the debt on Americans. Principally the mortgage, because why? People in a mortgage debt because of how Congress changed the laws in the deregulated financial services industry. Put people in this crisis. And now the federal government holds all the student loans. Somebody should have to take a lifetime to repay those loans back. So uh, if you are able to support me in that, I'll come out publicly uh, to address the issue that uh, in order for us uh, to responsibly cut the debt in this country, we've got to cut the debt that Americans owe on their mortgage and to their student loans. Thank you.